Hello there, and thank you for watching. This is Professor Ryan Paul at Texas A&M University Kingsville, and you're watching a video entitled The Poetic Scene. I think one of the best ways to start making sense of poetry is to think about a poem as a scene, like a scene in a movie, a TV show, a play. This leads us to ask two questions, starting off. What's happening and who's involved? What's going on in this scene and who are the individuals? Another way of saying that the poem is like a scene is calling the poem a conversation. It's a dialogue or usually a monologue because we only get one side of it most of the time, but it's a conversation between individuals, between people, a speaker or sometimes multiple speakers and an audience, an individual. So if there's a speaker and an audience or multiple speakers and multiple audiences, the first basic questions we want to ask, who's talking? Who's the one who's doing the speaking in this poem? Or who are the ones who are doing the speaking? And who else are they talking to? And this can be both those people who are being directly addressed, someone that's being spoken to directly by the speaker, or someone who's being indirectly addressed, not spoken to directly, but still meant to hear the words, or perhaps overhearing the words, watching the situation outside of the immediate conversation. We'll get into more detail and talk about some specific We also want to think about the relationship between these two people, if it's or, or these groups of individuals, the speaker and the audience. What's the relationship between them? And this can be a very specific relationship, husband and wife, or it could be a, a more vague relationship. Again, we'll get into some specific examples. And if there is some sort of relationship connection between the speaker and audience, how does the speaker feel about the audience in general? What's their general attitude towards this other person or people or group? And how does the audience feel about the speaker in general? Although here we want to be careful because usually all we get is one side of the conversation. So maybe instead of asking how does the audience feel about the speaker in general, it's how does the speaker think that the audience feels about them? It's a subtle but important distinction. Again, we'll get into some more specifics a little bit later. And then to go to the immediate moment of the poem itself, What's prompted this speech? What's prompted the poem? What event has happened in the world of the speaker and audience that provokes the speaker to offer this bit of communication to their audience? And in that situation, how has it transformed the speaker or how is it transforming the speaker or transforming the audience or transforming their relationship to one another? 
Something has happened to cause the speaker to speak, and something is changing. It might not be a huge thing, it might not be a major event and a major transformation, but the idea in a poem is that it's something that's at least just a little bit above, a little bit heightened from our everyday reality, from our normal situation. So what is it that's going on that makes this moment special enough for the speaker to address this poem to the other person or people? So here's my attempt to give a kind of visual layout, visual representation of these overlapping uh, issues. We have the speaker, most immediately we have the speaker and the audience, and they're connected through this poem, through this act of speech. And in that poem, we see something of the relationship. The poem is shaped by their relationship and it gives expression to whatever their relationship is, who they are to each other. But the poem also is shaped by and expresses the situation, the immediate moment, what's happening now as the speaker talks to the audience. And the relationship and the situation, these are uh, overlapping, but they also are usually at odds. The situation is often something that, to a greater or lesser degree, is testing the relationship or transforming it. It's cutting across the relationship diagonally, in a sense. If we think about a river merchant's wife, a letter, that's a situation in which the relationship between the two is at odds with the situation. They're married, yet they're apart from each other. And the poem is at the center of this nexus. So let's take a short break and then look at some examples. Let's consider some examples from our readings. Um, just looking at the titles of these poems, we can start asking some questions about the situation. The River Merchant's Wife, A Letter. The title tells us who's speaking and who she's speaking to, and it also gives us some hints as to the situation. It's a river merchant's wife, and she is writing to her husband. So we start asking questions. Why is she writing to him? What might be uh, her motivations? What might she be writing about? Why is he away? What is the situation or just what is the context of a, a wife writing to her absent husband? Just that context alone, what sort of questions does that start raising? So we can ask ourselves a little bit more specifically, what is the situation? Well, if it's a river merchant's wife writing to her husband, the river merchant, presumably he's away traveling for work as someone who works on the river would be want to do. So this husband is away. She's writing to him because he's away. What kind of speech is this? Uh, well, as the title tells us, again, it's a letter. And that's very important. She's writing a letter to her husband. Uh, and that's a very specific type of message. So again, thinking about the context and the type of communication that's going on, this can help us to start asking questions to understand what's going on in the poem. So some things that are raised by this, the significance of the context, the fact that there's an absent husband, the wife is alone. What might that lead us to expect from the wife in terms of what she's writing about or what she's writing for? What is the significance of the fact that she's writing a letter that's different from a note or a message, right? We don't tend to write letters very much in the modern world. Um, we send emails, we send texts, but how is a letter, what sort of weight does that give to the nature of this communication? And again, why write? What are her possible motivations? Why is she writing to him? Um, and thinking both about conscious motivations as well as unconscious motivations. What might someone not want to uh, openly admit in a letter, but that might be um, sort of implied by their words or their attitude. Another example, the poem, To a Daughter Leaving Home. So who is speaking? It's a mother, and to whom is she speaking? To a daughter. Uh, again, very significant context, just knowing that relationship, a mother speaking to a daughter, that's a particular type of relationship, just as a wife and a husband is a particular type of relationship, um, and they are different. That, that establishes, to some extent, 
what kind of communication is going to be going on, how the people are going to be communicating with each other, what they want from each other, what they expect from each other, and so on. So what's the situation? The daughter, as the uh, title tells us, is leaving home. So that's a very important situation. That's a very, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a milestone in someone's life, both the daughter's life and the mother's life. And so what kind of speech is this? Um, if the first, uh, if the previous poem was a letter, this is a farewell. This is saying goodbye. So if someone is saying goodbye, what kinds of things do they tell someone when they're saying goodbye? And not just bye, I'll see you tomorrow, but bye, you are leaving home. Um, what kinds of things might someone want to express? How might they feel? So thinking about the significance of the context, leaving home is very different than just going out, right? Someone who's leaving home, they're moving away. They're moving into a new stage of their life. So that sets up our expectations and it sets, uh, it sort of charges the atmosphere of the poem. Again, that we know it's a mother speaking to a daughter that raises the stakes, that gives us a sense of what's going on. There's some life in this poem. This is a real situation that's occurring. And we think about what are some possible motivations for the mother speaking and particularly um, what sort of conflicted emotions might a parent be thinking upon uh, their daughter's departure. Let's look at a third poem that tweaks this speaker-audience relationship a little bit. A mother to her waking infant. Well, who's speaking? Obviously, it's a mother. And who are they speaking to? To her infant child. It says that in the title, and if when you read the poem, you see that's clearly what's happening. But can an infant understand what the mother is saying? The infant might get the mood or the emotion, certainly. But do they understand the words? Can they respond? So that maybe causes us to, to ask some questions about why exactly this mother is, is speaking to her waking infant. And if the infant is really the person that she's addressing, what's the situation in which this uh, moment is happening? Well, again, the title tells us the infant is waking up, so the mother is talking to her. And just from that general situation, we might ask ourselves, just imagining a mother and an infant waking up, what is her motivation or her purpose? Why? What is she trying to express? Is she happy that her child has awoken? Is she annoyed because she was trying to get some rest and her infant was, was finally asleep? Is she trying to comfort the child, perhaps put it back to bed? Is she chiding the child? Is she upset that it's woken her? And again, we ask that question, is the poem really to the infant? So these are some of the questions that might shape our uh, initial interpretations or initial readings of this poem by causing us to think about, well, what is really going on between these two and who, are, who is the person actually talking to and, and for what purpose? One more somewhat detailed example and then a few very quick ones, La Migra by Pat Mora. Again, this puts a little tweak on the speaker audience issue because we have two speakers and thus two perspectives that are somewhat in conflict with each other, even though, as we'll see, it's a situation where it's a game. And so speakers are speaker one, speaker two, the child that says, I'll be the border patrol, the child that says, I'll be the Mexican woman. Perhaps this is a, a we, can, we can reason out that this might be a young boy and a young girl, a white boy, a Hispanic girl. Not necessarily super important to make those details, but just understanding that we have two different perspectives going on here. And so who are they speaking to? As opposed to many of the poems where that we've read where the speaker is addressing someone outside of the poem, here the poem is speaking to itself, so to speak. Part one is speaking to part two. Part two is responding back to part one. So we as the readers are overhearing, or we're like the parents who are watching the children at play. So we're watching a conversation rather than, than being in the position of the person addressed.
the situation, again, as we, as we saw from reading it, it's a game. They say they're going to play La Migra. So it's these two children playing a game. And when children who are playing together, well, their relationship is, of course, their playmates, but there's also a little bit of rivalry in any game, in any contest, their opponents. And in particular, this game, because it's one trying to catch the other, one trying to uh, uh, escape from the other. So the relationship between the two is, is complicated again. And what's the significance of the situation? Well, here we can see this game is in some sense obviously a cover for more serious issues, issues of racial discrimination and immigration and so forth. So here we are the outsiders watching the boy and the girl play and thus in some sense encouraged to take both perspectives. Whereas oftentimes in, in poems like A River Merchant's Wife, we are sort of in the position of the husband. We're getting the message. We don't see the message back. Here we see both sides and we're encouraged, I think, to, to participate in both sides. And that's the way the game, we become both players in the game. And that's the way the poem expresses its more serious content, I think. So just a few quick questions then we might want to ask. Uh, theme for English B, which tells us that it's an assignment, it's a homework assignment for an English class. Does this fulfill the assignment as, uh, as the poet, as the speaker describes it? Does this poem fulfill what the assignment was? In the poem, this is just to say, what is this? What is the this of the title? And what's the significance of just to say? How is this is just to say different from this is to say? What does that tell us about the situation, the context, the uh, uh, attitude of the speaker? And finally, in Let America Be America Again, who's speaking and to whom are they speaking? Um, is this an individual voice? Uh, is it an in individual audience or something more, something more than just a single person? These are just some quick questions to think about in terms of what is the poetic situation, who's talking to whom, and why. Or the poem My Last Duchess by Robert Browning, which is a challenging poem. Um, why is the Duke telling the story of his deceased wife? Why is he telling it to this person? What purpose does he have? It's kind of an odd story to tell, so what is he trying to do with this story? In the poem In Paris With You, what ideas do we associate with Paris? And then how does that cause us or, or encourage us to see that the speaker might be saying some things even though he doesn't want to say them? Or maybe trying to convince himself that he doesn't want to say some things and so expressing ideas indirectly. So to recap, in looking at the poetic situation or the poetic scene, we have the speaker, we have the poem or the text, the communication, we have the audience or addressee, the person that the speaker is sending this poem or text to, the relationship between the two, the relationship that defines, that connects them, and the situation that's being expressed in the poem that somehow transforms their relationship or shows us something about this speaker and their audience and their relationship that we hadn't seen before. Using this rubric or this heuristic, this model, what are some questions we can ask about these different elements? And these questions, it should be stressed, are not necessarily some things to proceed through in a linear way. They'll be overlapped and asking questions about one aspect of the poem will always shed light on another. So thinking about the speaker, we ask ourselves, who is speaking? What do we know about this person in terms of their history, their role, their identity? How do they feel towards the other person or persons that they're addressing? How do they feel about the situation that they're in that is prompting this speech? And what do they want either explicitly or implicitly or what do they want consciously, 
perhaps unconsciously, to accomplish in this speech what do they want from that other person. To ask questions about the text, the actual words. And of course, it should be stressed that we cannot ask questions about anything in the poem unless we are focused on the text. But to focus on the words themselves. What's the literal content of the speech? What's the literal meaning that's being expressed? And then what figurative or suggested ideas might be expressed in the speech? What are those submerged, hidden, implicit, or unconscious meanings that the speaker might be communicating? And then what does this speech tell us about the speaker, about their personality, about their emotions, about their level of intelligence, about their perception of themselves and others? And what are the important formal or structural features of the text? How is it shaped and what might that tell us about its meaning? The addressee or audience, the person that the speaker is talking to. Who is this person? Who's hearing it? To whom is the speaker addressing their speech? And what do we know about this person? Again, we only know it through the text and, of course, through the text that the speaker is giving us. But what can we tell, at least from the speaker's perspective, about this person? What might their place be in this situation, in this world? And how might they be reacting or responding to the speaker based on what we can tell from the text or what we might assume or understand given the world in which this conversation is taking place. The relationship between the two characters, the speaker and the addressee. Sometimes this can tell us more about them than thinking about them individually. What do we know about this relationship, who they are to each other? Is there a past history? Is there some balance of power or imbalance of power between them? That might tell us more about who they are than any specific thing like their name or age or occupation. What factors seem to affect their relationship? What shapes how they understand and feel towards each other and how they behave towards each other? How does their relationship and the expectation of that relationship share, uh, influence the way they speak to each other? If one person is concerned about maintaining a certain type of relationship with another, how does that influence what they say? And how might what's happening in this poem shape or reshape their relationship? What does it do to their understandings of each other and their feelings towards each other? Finally, to get to the situation or the context. What's the world around which this conversation is taking place? What's the nature of that world? What are the laws that govern it? What are their roles in this larger world? How do they understand their place in the world around them? Whether that world is their town, their city, their family. What has happened in that situation, in that world, to prompt this conversation? Why is one person speaking to the other? And this is not necessarily a literal event, but something, some idea or thought or reaction or emotion has triggered this conversation. What is it? And how has the world around them affected the speaker and the addressee? How has it shaped who they are? How does it shape who the, how they think about themselves, their emotions, their desires, and so forth? So to review, one way to think about many poems is to understand them or imagine them as a conversation taking place between two or more people. And so as any conversation is, no matter what the subject that they're speaking about, the nature of that conversation, the way it flows, the particular words are going to be shaped by the personalities and the histories and the relationships of the people involved. And of course, it's also going to be shaped by the larger situation or world they're in. What is the culture? What is their society? What is the time of year or day? Or what is the period in history in which it's taking place? And then all these different aspects that we talked about that I broke out speaker, text, addressee, relationship, situation. These things are not really separable. They all contribute and overlap with each other, but it can be useful to isolate them one at a time in order to ask questions, 
to lead yourself through thinking and generating ideas about how the poem is communicating its ideas, its meaning. And then each of these aspects will help you to understand some other aspect and thus contribute to your larger interpretation. So understanding who the speaker is helps you understand who the addressee is. Thinking about the relationship helps you understand both the characters and also what meanings might be submerged within the text and so on. And just a final thought to take away, again, thinking about the poem as a conversation and as an artistically crafted conversation, like a scene in a movie, you're the viewer or observer watching this drama unfold before you. What does it mean to you? What do you feel or think about it? How do you relate to it? And how does it relate to you? Just as you might imagine observing a conversation or a scene in a movie or a TV show.